guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are a subscriber, thank you so very much for coming back. If you are new here, what's up? My name is Liz. I'm a faith mama, military wife, and lover of all things life. And I want to welcome you to my channel. If you like this video, if you like what you see and you like the content that I put out there, please make sure that one, you hit that thumbs up button. Two, you subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you never ever miss a video. With all of that being said, today we are hitting the military life part of uh, my channel. So what we are doing is talking about the PCS binder. As many of you guys know, we are supposed to be PCSing in, what are we right now? We're in March, we're supposed to PCS in August, so we're about five months away from PCSing. Now that is once they lift all those stop moves because we're in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic and they have stopped moves for regular PCSs, both CONUS and OCONUS. But I am still preparing just like we're moving on time, right? Because I want to be prepared and if it gets pushed back a little bit, well, I'm still prepared, right? Um, so I have created my PCS binder. There are a ton of printables that I am so excited to share with you guys in here. These printables are going to be available for you to download for the free on my website, lizlorette.com. So make sure that you check out that website, make sure that you print out all of those printables so that you can be prepared for PCS season as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you on a tour of my PCS binder and also give you some up close shots so that you can see kind of all the different things that I have going on in here. So without saying much more, I guess, let's jump into the video. All right, so first things first, what I have, of course, a cover. I just found some cute little clip art, Bush Family PCS, Fort Lee, Virginia, 2020, right? Um, so whenever you go in here, the first thing that you will see is actually my pencil pouch. So what I'll have in here, I have, currently have a pen, highlighter, post-it notes, and some paper clips just to kind of um, stay organized as we are on the road. I'll probably add in some additional things like pencils. This may become like a catch-all for extra receipts or just any small things. Probably I'll have my SD cards in here too because I plan on vlogging a little bit um, during our PCS move, you know, the drive, because it's like an eight day drive. Yeah, no, it's not an eight day drive. They allot us eight days to travel from Fort Irwin, California to Fort Lee, Virginia. We are planning on doing it in six days, three days, six days. I don't remember. I'll show you once you get further into my PCS by here. So the first thing, um, I got these actually um, little clip-in envelopes, I guess you would call them, but they're pretty awesome. So I have, we're going to put our government documents, right? So my husband's orders, any amendments, his DA-31, which is the leave form, those all will go in here. I figure just have them at the ready. He will have a separate binder for him to keep all of his government paperwork, um, but it would just be helpful for me to have a copy of the orders for like school enrollment, for housing, for different things that I might need it for. So I'll have a copy of those things as well. Behind there, I have all of my different PCS checklists, right? So these are some printables that you're gonna be able to get off of my website. So the first is a six month PCS checklist. If you have not watched that video, I will link it probably in the end card um, and it will also be linked down below. Um, so definitely check out that six month PCS checklist video and you can print off your six month PCS checklist. Behind here I have our three month PCS checklist. On the three month PCS checklist, one of the things that I mentioned that you should start doing is actually starting the deep cleaning of your home prior to moving out, right? So there are some big things that you wanna tackle like baseboards, like the appliances, like pulling things out and cleaning behind. So that's why on this next page, I have the deep clean checklist so that you can start working your way through it as you mark off your three month PCS checklist. Behind the deep clean checklist, I have the one month PCS checklist. So obviously once I hit one month out, um, I will go ahead and start tackling those things. But stay tuned because I this is a series, right? So you are going to get a video regarding the one month PCS checklist as well. 
And then on the next page, we have two weeks and one week out. So there are some important things that you wanna take care of, like washing all of your big items two weeks prior to um, your move, one week out. You definitely want to run your washer and dryer through like a wash cycle without any clothing in it. You wanna unhook everything, let it all dry out so that no mold and mildew grows as it's being transported from one duty station to the next. So that's really important. I don't do that a full week out. I do that two to three days out because you wanna give it a, a full like 24 hours to 48 hours for it to completely dry so that you don't get any of that mold, mildew, any of that nastiness and bring that to your new duty station. That is no fun. But you wanna give yourself enough time to go ahead and do all of the necessary laundry that you need to do before you move, right? So two weeks, one week PCS checklist. Again, there will be a whole video on that. Again, you can print out this printable to see exactly what is on that. The next thing that I have is a checklist for the day of move. So there's a lot of things that you wanna do, like make sure your trash cans are empty because guess what? Movers pack exactly what is there, right? So if your trash can is full of trash, that entire trash can with the trash is going into a box. Hello, Luna. Y'all can't see her, but my dog is up in here trying to give me love. I know, I'm filming, ma'am. Leave me be. Um, so there's a day of move checklist, things that you wanna do before the movers get there, and then things that you need to do after the movers leave, like another once over of cleaning, inspecting for damages, notating those damages, different things like that. The next printable that I have in my PCS binder and that is available for download is going to be your packing list, right? So again, there's going to be a whole nother video dedicated to this, but I think it's really important to put together a first day's box that's going to have your essential cleaning products to clean your new home that you are moving into and then a packing list for your kids, for yourself, for your spouse, for the service member. Um, so just make sure that you check out that packing list because I mean, it's kind of all obvious, but it's easy to forget things, clothing, whatever required uniforms for the service member, um, entertainment for everybody because you'll probably be without cable for a couple of days, right? These are all things that you want to remember to pack so that you guys all maintain your sanity. The next thing that I have in here, a lot of these things aren't filled in yet just because I have a running list, but I just haven't filled them in, is I think it's important to have a bucket list for your new duty station, right? Things that you want to do to enjoy that new duty station. For us, we are West Coast people, West Side. <laughs> that was so lame. But we are moving to the East Coast, so we're like, this is something totally new. Let's pick out things that we want to do, like the Cherry Blossom Festival in Washington, D.C. Let's go see some football games up there, right? We are going to Virginia. We can go easily see the Baltimore Ravens play. My husband is a Redskins fan, whack, but we'll be near there so we can totally go see a game, right? So make a bucket list of all the things that you wanna do. Big things, big trips, whether it's to DC, to the National Monuments and things, and then find small things, like what is there nearby to your duty station that people like to do? I found something called Pocahontas State Park where you can camp. That would be something that's cheap and fun um, and easy to do on a quick weekend, right? So just look those things up and definitely use the bucket list because that will get everybody excited for your new duty station. The next thing I recommend, this is not a printable that you can print out from my website, but definitely check out just free calendar printables. I'll um, go ahead and link who I got this one from so that you guys can support this girl. Um, but basically, I like to keep a printable of calendars so that I can keep track of different dates. We are currently in March, so there are some different things that I wanted to keep track of. And as we go throughout the different months, I'll just pull out the different calendars um, that are each behind it so that I can stay on top of things like scheduling um, household goods, scheduling different briefings, scheduling appointments, going to those briefings and going to those different appointments. Um, just whatever it is that I need to do. If I know that if I don't schedule something in, it probably won't get done, right? So it helps me to write those things down. Even if it's like on this day, I am pulling the fridge away from the wall, I am pulling the stove away from the wall, and I am cleaning behind it. And especially with me because one, again, with coronavirus, school is out, so I have a five-year-old to entertain. Two, I am 35 weeks pregnant, so I am due in four to five weeks. They're talking about induction a little bit early. 
Um, so I'm gonna have a whole lot going on and I need to be able to put everything down on paper so I can make sure that I get everything done because it's about to get crazy. And so if you're like me, you probably need to write things down to make sure it all gets taken care of. So the next envelope, I am gonna link these because I think these are super cool. They can hold um, quite a bit of paper. You just easily snap it all in there. But the next envelope is for our hotel reservations. So once I have our hotels reserved for our trips along, or for our stops as we PCS from Fort Irwin to Fort Lee, I will print out those confirmations and put those in here as well as um, for our lodging when we get to Fort Lee because you usually don't have a house right away. Um, so I will print out the confirmation for that so that there is no confusion. I have the contact information for each hotel. I know where we're going, I have the address, everything is just right there. Also, once we check out of that lodging, they will most likely email me a receipt, but I will probably request them to print one too, just because it's easier to have multiple copies in order for us to be reimbursed for our hotel. You're gonna to have to show proof of paying for that lodging. So it's just really important that I keep all of that in one place. And so it's really helpful to do that with these little snap uh, folder things. The next one, this is a principle you could use. Um, I plan on using it. I'm just an over planner. I'm kind of crazy like that. So I do plan on using this, but this is the lodging tracker. So just something as well to write the date, the hotel you're staying at, the location, the total that you paid, and whether or not you received a receipt. So um, you would put all of those confirmations, all of your receipts in here, but this is just a quick at a glance view of all of your lodging dates, amounts paid, and whether or not you received a receipt. So it's just easier for me to keep track, and if it's easier for you to, definitely print those out. The next thing that I have in my PCS binder is uh, a printout of the directions, right? So Yes, we have our phones. Yes, we have Google Maps. Yes, we have Waze and all of that. And those are great things. But because we are driving across country, there may be times when we lose signal. Um, so I just prefer to have a backup of our uh, directions for everything. I have divided it on Google Maps PCS day one. We're going from Fort Irwin, California to Flagstaff, Arizona. And then from Flagstaff to Santa Rosa, New Mexico. And then from New Mexico, I want to say to like somewhere in Oklahoma. I think we're going to Oklahoma City. That's day three. Oklahoma City to Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee to Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee to Fort Lee, Virginia. Yes, so six day, a six day trip. Um, so I have that all broken down. I have the directions printed out here to get us to each of those um, cities. I will probably update it once I know which hotels we are staying at for sure and have it just directions from our home at Fort Irwin to the first hotel, hotel to hotel, hotel to hotel along the way. Uh, that would just kind of make it easiest for us. But again, just a good idea to have a printout of those different directions. Again, if you hear any jingling, that is my dog, of course, all up in my business. You guys would have seen this in the PCS budgeting video. So this is my sinking funds tracker. Um, and so it's just something that I wanna keep in here to keep track of our budget. On the other side, we have our monthly budget, which is really important for me to stay on top of. So I, I think it's important to keep that in there. It's probably, it's up to you, it's your prerogative if you choose to keep that information in there. The next one that we will put in here is housing documents. So the application for the new housing office, any move out documents that we receive from our losing duty stations housing documents when we check out a housing there, um, important contacts, and then lists of any damages, both when we from leaving housing and from whenever we move into our new housing. I'd like to keep all of that new documentation into in my PCS binder. The next one is household goods documents. We're gonna keep that in here too. So the shipping documents and the inventory list that they give us, any important contacts for them, as well as a list of any damages that the movers caused and, and those documents that go along with that because it's just helpful to keep it all in one area. This is not necessary, but I like to do this. A lot of housing areas have, or housing companies have their floor plans listed on their website. I am all about like visualization and seeing what you want and going after it. So this is just a floor plan of the house that I want <laughs> when we move 
moved to Fort Lee. Um, obviously, nothing is guaranteed, but it's just nice to have that in here, to have an idea of where, if I get the house that I want, where I would want all of my furniture to be placed. It helps me to have a plan because if you don't know this, movers only place your furniture one time, okay? So if you know what type of house you're moving into, have an idea of where your furniture is going, whether or not it's going to fit. For example, on this floor plan, it has the measurements of each room. This way I can know, all right, this is gonna fit there. I'm gonna have them put this there. And then it's just kind of less confusion on the day, the movers that are bringing our household goods in. The next thing that we have is uh, my vehicles list. So we have two vehicles. The plan currently, again, is for us to ship one and drive one, but I just wanna keep all of our titles, our insurance information, the shipping information for our own vehicle and the registration information for both of them all in one place. Again, it's it's really important to keep your most important documents with excuse me with you. Um, try not to let the, the packers pack them because if it gets lost, if it gets damaged, I mean, it's really hard to find those or maybe you might not be able to get them at all. So I plan on keeping all of our important documents all in our binder and that's why I have all of our vehicle titles, insurance registration, all of that information. I plan on keeping that. This is another printable you can get from my website, an important contacts list. I am currently um, compiling all my contacts before I write them in, but you want like your, your children's school contact, the losing one and the incoming one, the housing contacts, both losing and incoming. If you have a sponsor assigned to you, you probably want your sponsor's information. Um, you probably want the non-emergency MP, military police line for your gaming duty station. You probably want your insurance phone number, your vehicle insurance if you're driving, right? You want to have that phone number, um, any roadside assistance phone numbers listed. You're going to want to have any renter's insurance listed because you'll want to check with your renter's insurance, but sometimes they cover your goods while in transit so that if they're damaged, they, they would pay as well. So these are all some important contacts that you may want to have just compiled again Quick and easy at a glance, our phones tend to die, right? So if you can just have it all right there, ready to go, it's just helpful. Um, the next thing that is behind my important contacts, another printable for you is your address history. Because we move a whole lot, we have a whole bunch of addresses. So it's really important to keep um, a history of those addresses and the dates that you live there. Why? Um, a lot of times, if you are applying for any sort of job, whether it's federal government, if it's a contractor job, even just anything that needs a background check, you have to provide an address history, and a lot of times it's the past 10 years. I can tell you I'll probably fill up this page within the last 10 years because of how much we've moved, I've moved before we got married. So you definitely want to have just a list of your previous addresses in one place. It's going to make it so much easier for you rather than having to think, what the heck was my address when I lived at Fort Campbell and how long did I live there and all of that. So have your address history written down. Again, a printable you can get at my website. All right, so the next thing that you are going to want to do is a high value inventory. Now the movers are going to do their own high value inventory, but I just think it's very important that you do your own. So one, on one of the checklists I have written down, make videos of your washing machine and your dryer that actually working like on and working so that they know hey before you took our goods they were working so if they come to you and they're not working that's a problem and they need to replace or reimburse right um, do videos of your tvs on and working uh, printers laptops all of those things anything that they are going to take make sure that you take videos and pictures of those items um, to show that they were working so that if they come to you damaged then you have a legitimate claim for reimbursement or for replacement. So on this, it's just item, um, describe the item, and then any serial numbers attached to those items as well. So um, it's just a good thing to cover your bases because if you go around the PCS block just one time, you will hear all of the horror stories of how people's items are damaged, they get all their items back damaged. We just, I just, mm -mm, I'm trying to avoid all of that. So again, high value inventory printable available on my website. Definitely, definitely check that out. So right in here, I don't have it yet. It's actually up in my file cabinet. I need to pull it down. 
um, and they need to request our new medical records. But in here, I will put medical records for myself, for my daughter, and for my soon-to-be son, um, just so that we have all the documentation in one place, all of the vaccination records, all of that good stuff will all be available in one place. So that I plan on putting that in there. The next one behind here actually is our dental records. Here at Fort Irwin, our dental office closed and they can't give me x-rays and they can't give me any records. All they can give us is our patient ledger showing kind of like what they did and how much we paid. Whatever, that's how the military works, I guess. But it'll work out just showing that we have been to the dentist. I know here in California, you do have to show proof um, that your child has been seen by a dentist prior to enrolling them in school. Um, so that's why I just wanna have that information in my PCS binder as well. The next envelope I'm not going to show because it has our sensitive documents, but the next envelope is going to have our um, all of our birth certificates, all of our, or my husband and my marriage certificate, all of our social security cards, all that good stuff in one place so that we have access to it when it comes time to enroll in different programs and things like that. The next one, again, school records. So I contacted our school already. They will have these school records available for pickup on the last day of school. Again, school is closed amidst the coronavirus pandemic. Who knows if it's going to reopen? So I probably will have to contact them again to figure out how to get those school records if they do not reopen. Um, but they also let me know that they do have an agreement. I cannot remember. I think it's called an interstate compact. Um, but basically, when I get to the, the new school to enroll my daughter, they the new school will contact her old school and get her necessary documentation as well. So that's kind of makes it a lot easier. But any school records that I can get, um, I will probably put all of her. I'm looking because that's where my daughter's um, like report cards and our parent teacher conference documentation and things like that. All of that would go in there if you have a, a certain um, like education plan like sometimes people can have you're gonna want to keep all of that in here so physicals for it any enrollment documents any records for school will all go in this school records portion next one you can't really see this but this is for our dog Luna she's on the back right here she's so cute um, but you need to have like vet vaccination records um, for housing, a lot of times, you know, if you're going to live on post, you have to register them on post. Um, so it's just important to have all of that documentation and just have a picture of that pet um, for documentation as well. Because a lot of times they like pictures of the pet too. And then I just have an extra folder in case I need it. Um, I may put some scratch paper in here in case I need to take notes for something. Because a lot of times when you move, um, they'll have like a newcomer's brief things like that so I may end up taking this with me and then using that scratch paper to go ahead and uh, take notes during a newcomer's brief or something like that. So that is my PCS binder. Um, I'm so happy that I was able to show it to you. I'll probably do like a quick flip through for you guys so you guys can see kind of what those printables look like up close but make sure that you check out lizlorette.com to get those printables. Let me know in the comments what, you know, if there's anything that I'm missing that you, excuse me, I have the burps because I'm pregnant. <laughs> um, let me know if there's anything you think I'm missing, anything you'll be adding to your PCS binder. What makes your PCS easiest, easiest, excuse me, for you? So let's do that quick flip through real quick. So here is the front of my PCS binder, Bush Family PCS. This girl getting it done because that's what mamas do, right? And wives, military spouses, all of us. Anyways, here again is that pencil pouch with just some supplies. Again, I'll probably add SD card or something like that. Government documents. Here's that awesome little snap-in folder. I'm going to link it in the description below because I got this off of Amazon. PCS checklist. So we have our six month one. We have our three month PCS checklist area for notes. We have the deep clean checklist. We have the one month PCS checklist. Two weeks and one week out tips and notes. We have the day of move both Oh, information to put in the do not pack room, 
to do before the move, after the move. We have the packing list, first day box, household, family members. We have the bucket list, thrive at your new duty station. Yes, I will. I have my calendar in here. Then I have the pocket for hotel reservations, confirmations and receipts. The lodging tracker, so I cannot see it all just at a quick glance. Our printout of our directions. Split up by days, we have our PCS budget, so sinking funds, right? Then we have my monthly budget. Housing documents, application, move out documents from the losing duty station, contacts, and any damages. Household good documents, so shipping documents received, inventory, contacts, any damages caused by movers. This is the home I want, right? Helps us to plan for um, where our furniture will go. Vehicle information, titles, insurance, shipping, registration, etc. Important contacts sheet. We have our address history sheet. We have the high value inventory. We have school records, report cards, physicals, and the enrollment docs. We have documents for the dog. My dog. <laughs> and then just extra. It for my PCS binder video. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate your time, the little bit of time that you give me out of your week. So again, in the comments, let me know what would you add to the PCS binder? Is there anything that I'm missing? Give me your wisdom, just like I try to share my wisdom with you. In the comments, I mean, not the comments, in the description, there will actually be links to my website, links to those printables, and links to anything that I bought on Amazon that is in uh, this PCS binder. So with all that being said, if you like the video, hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe, share this with a girlfriend or a guy friend to make the PCS move just a little bit easier. And until next time, later loves.